You know it's time for crab cycle. All right, it's time for bed now. Oh, you're having trouble sleeping? How about a nice story before bed? Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'll tell one for you right now. I'll try not to make it too scary. Just for you. Lewis and Sandra were walking home from a long evening of drinking and laughing with other partygoers. They were having the time of their lives, but now it was time for them to return to their hotel room. I think it's this way? Are you sure? I could have sworn we were over that way. I don't know. Ugh. We'll find it somewhere. Just get us there quickly. I hate how dark it is out here. Don't worry, darling. I'm sure we'll find our ways. Hello there. You look a little lost, friends. (sighs) Who the hell is that? I don't know. Just don't engage him. I'll take care of it. What's the deal with those sour-looking faces? My God, you'd think somebody died around here. (laughs) Will you excuse us? We're on our way home. Home? Why would you ever want to be home when you could be looking at my grabby hands? See, look at my little grabby hands. My little grabby, grabby hands. Grabby, 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 grabby hands. Something's really wrong here. I can use my little grabby hands all day long, grabbing this thing and that thing. Oh, very, very grabby. Just look at me, just grabbing away with my grabby little hands. That was very nice, sir. Uh, I'm sure we'd love to see more tomorrow. Thank you for sharing that with us. Oh, no need to thank me. I just grabby grab with my grabby hands all day long. Looky here. Grabby grab. Grabby grab. Right, we're getting out of here. Grab. Grabity grab grab. After stumbling around in the dark for a while, they finally found their hotel. The strange man was nowhere to be seen. Much to their relief, no one had ever told them that strange people tended to walk the streets here at night. But at least, they thought, at least they're harmless enough. Finally, they were in bed, ready to prepare for another long day tomorrow. Please. What is it, darling? There's someone at the door. What the hell is anyone doing? Huh? What's that? Who is that? You said you'd love to see more. Well, here I am. I still have my grabby hand. Why the hell are you here and what the hell do you want from us? I live for grabbing. 
When they were found the next morning, their bodies were mushed to a wet, bloody pulp. The bedsheets around them were smeared with large handprints the experts couldn't identify. There wasn't any evidence of a forced entry, so no one had any idea what happened to the poor young couple. Sir, sir, I understand you're just as confused about this as the rest of us. But if, if you could just take a guess what happened to them, what do you think happened? What do I think? I think they were grabbed to death. are quite familiar. Very likely you'll come up with a correct diagnosis. Yes, it looks like a cold, a common cold. Runny nose, headache, achiness, very often a slight fever. Those are some of the symptoms of the common cold. The cold virus will gain a foothold and cause the inflammations which so often are associated with the common cold. The common cold is not a serious sickness. But still, medical science as yet has not found a cure for it. Ah, yes, there are remedies galore. All sorts of medications, which soothe pain and headaches, and so bring some relief. However, they do not cure colds. And no matter how convincingly they may be advertised, do not use them without having checked with your doctor. What you think is a simple cold could really be the first symptoms of some other disease, such as measles, infantile paralysis, diphtheria, whooping cough, scarlet fever, influenza, and others. A cold which is not treated might very well back up along the mucous membrane and so invade the sinuses, the cavities in the bones of the face and the skull. Or the infection may reach the middle ears when it invades the eustachian tubes, which connect the middle ears with the throat. Protect yourself against infection. Keep pencils and other things out of your mouth. Golly, what a beautiful morning! Ah, much better. Let's see here. What's on the calendar? My oh my! And it's the big day! Yeah! Oh, I need to run to the store. So much to buy, so much to do. I can't believe I almost forgot. I've had this plan so long. Hmm. Here, let's see. See here, what's on my shopping list here? Hmm. Uh, we need just the right tools for the job. Let's see, there's a. Uh... Oh, there's the bleach, perfect. Extra heavy duty trash bags. <laughs> Can't forget the packing peanuts. We're gonna clean this whole world right up. Now, all we need now is some extra drain cleaner. See, some. Bungee cords. 
Oh, hey, and you know, while we're here, let me get a new shovel. Perfect. Oh, this just makes me so giddy. Oh, hey, hey, I almost forgot the most important part. Silly me. Hi there, Mr. Shopkeep. Can I, can I get one of those there behind the counter? One, one of these? Which one? Oh, I don't know. Have anything on sale? I can get you this one half off. It's uh, 150. That's perfect. Thank you so much, sir. That will do the job just fine. Alright, now with all the errands out of the way, it's time to go to work. I just can't wait to see everyone today. Now, before I head in, just some quick assembly. Fantastic. Let's get this party started. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Bossman. Happy birthday. All right, you fuckers, it's party time. <laughs> <laughs> what? What the fuck? Why are you doing this? Shut the fuck up, Billy. I'm doing my job. <laughs> How does it taste, bitches? How the fuck does that taste? <sighs> this has been... Perfect. Good golly. Such a small change. But now the world's so much cleaner. <laughs> Florence. Florence! Come on, man. I thought you were ready with the reports. Have you even been paying attention this whole meeting? I'm... Sorry, sir. I'm afraid I left one report in my car. Would Karen like to show hers first while I fetch it? We already talked about her protocol. Uh, I can do that. Fine. But if I catch you dozing off again, Florence... Oh, don't worry, Mr. Dale. It won't happen again. Never ever again. Listening to KAHW7, your late night dating coach. Tonight we're answering all of your questions about masculinity. What does it mean to be a man? All right, and west of the Rockies, you are on the air. Hi. So I just had a really, you know, a really simple question. All right. Um, so yesterday, while I was having dinner with my wife, mm -hmm. she announced to me that. Um, she was going to rape me, and Ooh. I just wanted to know if it's masculine if my wife rapes me, and, um, and I want to know if it's, uh, okay if I cry afterwards as well. Uh, yes. Um, well, that's an interesting story, I think. Um, all right, next call. You are on the air. Cry 
Yeah. Oh, fuck, not this again. All right, if you have a serious problem, please let me know what it is. Caller, you are on the air. Hi, yes, yeah, so I, I'm just calling in again because I want to follow up. Um, you know, a little while ago, uh, my wife and I went to bed, and uh, as promised, she raped me, and I cried afterwards, and I'm still not sure if I feel like a man. I think I might try crying again and just uh, see what see what happens from there. I lost my ball. Hanging on the wall She grabbed them and left them In the bathroom stall I said, hey now I lost my balls I lost my balls I said, hey And now this evening, we're going to take an inside look at a hospital that's implementing progressive new strategies to ensure the health of its patients. Journalist John Ford now with the story. I'm currently entering St. Yasminos. It's 12 o'clock sharp. Today seems to be a fairly ordinary day. Lots of incoming patients and traffic flow to and from the facility. The building is tremendous. It's like or football fields and square footage on the ground floor. And St. Yasmin F's is the largest facility in this highway plaza. Oh, oh hey, hey, good, a good afternoon, sir. Sir, we're with uh, Channel 80. Could, could you spare a few minutes for, um, for an interview? Oh, what? Uh, I'm making a uh, piece on uh, St. Yasmin F's. We want to hear a patient's perspective of the new practices they're trying yeah. out. Yeah, I don't know what this is about, man. I'm not into any gay shit. Wait, wait par pardon me, sir. Sir, we're, we're, we're journalists. I, I, th I think you misunderstood. We, we just want to ask you a few questions. Hey, man, you better back off. My wife is armed in the car, and I got mad karate skills. Sir, sir there's no need to be violent. We, we just wanted That's to ask... That's it! You're not about to probe my asshole! <laughs> All right, so uh, we haven't gotten the uh, warmest welcome, but I believe uh, we've been expected here. Hi, uh, John Fort. We're in to see Dr. Norman. Uh, Fort, here, let me see. Mm. Ah, yes, I see your appointment. We have a special waiting room for you over here on your left. Just follow the rusty chains and you can't miss it. Chains? Mm-hmm. All right, got it. Now the first thing we noticed upon our arrival was the interesting smells that greeted us. The sing-song medley of freshly browned hamburger mixed with 90% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and gym socks. It wasn't even the 4th of July. But like the receptionist had said, there was a trail of rusty chains that led us down the dim hallway, and turning passage after passage until we saw it, a grease-stained door with a backlit sign reading, special waiting. And at this point, I knew we were going to see the most cutting edge of modern science and healthcare. Man, with how many years we've had modern healthcare, I can't believe they still keep the same magazines lying around. God, this one, this one looks like my grandma read it back when she was still alive. Eh, it's definitely nice to not be seated around sick people while we wait. There's surprisingly a little traffic here. But in any case, I uh, expect we'll be seen soon. Mr. Fort? Ah, you definitely smell like a journalist. It's good to see you. I am Graham, Dr. Norman's assistant. He wanted me to show you around first before meeting you. 
Like, yeah, you, thank you for having me. It's uh, it's a pleasure to visit the facility. I'm I'm excited to see what you've been working on. Oh yes, we have so much to show you. So so much. Just just follow me, and you'll be fine. It's hard to capture just how large the building is in words. It's like if a football field had the same enthusiasm as the Statue of Liberty and they gave birth to 22 kids, and we're talking big. It feels like hours walking to our first stop. All right, Mr. Fort. To our left here is our lab for new and interesting research. Animal research. I thought this was uh, just a hospital. Like, don't they do you... everything here, Mr. Ford. This place was built for science. <laughs> <laughs> All right, step inside. We don't have forever. Whoa. Whoa, wait, wait. What the hell is this? At a cursory glance, the room looks like what one would expect from a research lab. Barren walls, beakers... Tubes and flasks stacked and tangled in orderly chaos on each table surface. But there, toward the back of the room... Oh. Oh, shit. You weren't supposed to see that. Staff! I need this corridor bolted! No. Wait. I'm not trying to run away. I I genuinely want to know. What the hell is that thing? You... You weren't supposed to see that, but, uh... Isn't it obvious? It's a couch, Mr. Ford. A couch? But what the hell is up with all those things sticking out from under it? Arms and legs? You don't need to know who they were. We're big fish in this very large industry, Mr. Ford. And we reuse everything we can. What are they doing under their god? There's... It's like... It's like seven people's worth of arms sticking out over there. There's really no need to explain. You'll be joining them very soon. Wait, they're still alive? And they can hear you, Mr. Ford. They're listening. Don't you hear them? Dear God. I don't know how you, you did it and, and why. Science! <laughs> Science! You're going to love your new life as a couch, Mr. Fort. But if you're going to do that, at least tell me why. When the hospitals fill up with the diseased and depraved, they'll need something to sit on. You'll fit right in, Mr. Fort. You'll know what joy it is to feel the caress of a thousand sickly bottoms as you bear their weight on a brand new upholstered back. You'll love it, Mr. Ford. You'll cherish every moment. No! 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 You're probably wondering at this point how I escaped such a dreadful fate. It wasn't through luck, wisdom, past experience, or anything at all, actually. You see, I never escaped in the first place. I'm still here with my rear end surgically fixed to the living carcass of this human couch. You may be able to hear them a little better. Now, Graham was nice enough to allow me to document my final words before I am to perform my job in a brand new waiting room. But anyway, otherwise I'd say the facility is pretty great, knowledgeable, kind staff, and personally, I'd I'd even give them five out of five stars. Signing off for a final time, this is John Fort with Channel 8. The year is tomorrow. Cars are obsolete. People drive on their way to work using technologically advanced scraps of rubber and cinder blocks. Bicycles are universally banned, world law dictating their need to recycle all valuable metal. The U.S. has finally let go of the penny, a copper coinage that costs more to make than its actual value has now found its use in fuel production. 
public schools proudly display their dependency on copper power. Do you enjoy having light? What was once called the internet is now only a pile of twisted circuits that spans half the globe, flickering on and off in rebellion. Sparks of agony rising into the smoke-filled air. Even now, the world isn't silent. On occasion, tumbleweeds scuttle across pavement and empty storefronts, only to be picked up by a fatigued workman to be harvested for fuel. If it's one thing we've learned, just about anything can be fuel. Immense nests of hair sit bailed at every street corner, casting thick shadows onto the eternally overcast landscape. Fierce, ashen winds howl through the desolation, pleading for the world to not feel alone. And somewhere, far off beyond the vision of crumbling towns, Unidentified animals shriek, occasionally cutting through the thick of the wind. There was a time when we considered animals our friends, some more than others. But today they have found a greater purpose, assisting man in whatever remains of their civilized creation. The beginning of the end of our budget helped immensely in the research that was conducted, and though there wasn't room for caution, the results have undoubtedly proved instrumental in the world's recovery. They serve the world with their newfound bodies, ones provided by science and intuition. What the common man once viewed as a comfort, a luxury, is now far more. No town center is without the memory of what stood tall before. Burning effigies of the large-eared mouse allow for constant light around the walkways. Once the fire burns them completely, new representations are hung in place and set to fire once again. Civilians amble around, muttering to themselves, Remember yesterday, fear tomorrow. Now, a visit to the White House. Chalmers? Good evening. Yes, I'm uh, here to speak to the President. Well, I'm sorry, actually. Uh, the President is not available right now. What? Why is he not available? I have an appointment. <sighs> well, I'm afraid the President is out of service temporarily. Come see for yourself. My God, it's worse than I thought. Hey there, listeners. Thank you for listening to the show. The show show. What is the show show? It's brain surgery performed live on the air. <laughs> Are you paying attention? Now, please stay calm, Mr. Wilson. We, we have, have a whole team of, of experts watching, watching over you. Do not attempt to struggle. After a while, it won't hurt at all. That's right, Mr. Wilson. Now, for all the folks at home, our patient tonight is Mr. Brian J. Wilson, age 55. 
He lives at his home in sunny Santa Barbara, California. Land of the free, home of the brave. His family consists of his wife, Marlene, and his son, Cole, both who he loves dearly. Isn't that right? Lately, Mr. Wilson has been complaining about symptoms. And we know all about symptoms now, don't we? <laughs> Headache, nausea, pain radiating around the shoulder blades, excessive coughing, mucus down the back of the throat, and the sensation of maggots eating holes in the flesh. Now we knew, as soon as we saw him, that he wasn't kidding. This man is covered in holes. <laughs> they really are eating you alive, Mr. Wilson. And today, we're going to put a stop to their shenanigans. So sit tight, here comes the surgeon. As all our regular listeners will know, we hire only the best in medical malpractice. This man is no exception, spending over a decade in our service as a Navy medic, Dr. Emerson has carved over a thousand skulls, and that's just for his personal collection. <laughs> But today's patient won't be going in anyone's collection today. No, after treating our patient, we're going to ensure he goes exactly where he belongs. Exactly where he belongs. Are we ready to begin? All right, let's go. Listen to me. Are you listening? It's feeling pretty warm in here. Wouldn't you say? Slicey dicey. Trust me. You won't feel a thing. Do you feel my hands on you? Didn't think so. Slicey dicey. Turning your brain into a nice, juicy sand.
feeling better, aren't you? This is all really too funny. Hilarious. Everyone at home will be surprised to know that Mr. Wilson doesn't actually exist. <laughs> That's right. He's not real. Mr. Wilson is actually just my left hand. Good, good now, Mr. Wilson. We're glad you're doing well. <laughs> Hasn't this been such a blast? Thank you for tuning in to yet another successful operation. We're so glad to have you here. Listen in next week when we'll open up another happy vest. We promise no tricks next time. Isn't that right, Mr. Wilson? Why aren't you laughing? I said, why aren't you laughing? Isn't this all so funny? Sounds to me like I've cut your brain out. Fine then. I'll laugh. I'll laugh at all of you. Just like I said I would. I'll laugh. pays the bills it, it 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 does what i need it to do you know i mean sure i, I could find a better job you know i'm i'm, I'm sure but you, you know it's uh i mean what can i say it's it's a tough market you out know, there i'm pretty sure if you quit your job right now and you just got a better job you'd you'd have another job instantly i don't understand like i'm serious you should quit right now and go find something else all right ron i you know i think we've talked about this long enough I need to go and finish recording this album and uh, Are you I'll talk to you later. Right now? I, I can't fucking believe. <sighs> All right. Well, enough of that. Huh? This just in. The authorities ask that you please stay indoors for your own safety. An unusual viral strain has rolled in with the fog as it travels worldwide. Experts are saying that people are transforming into something more horrible than we have ever imagined. And now's the time to board your windows and lock your doors. More information is on the way as we wait to understand the... F <coughs> what the fuck? Oh man, you gotta be fucking kidding me. This is a fucking end of everything. All right, well, oh, let's just press record here. I just gotta get it done. You know what the fuck else are you gonna do? All right, is this thing on? Well, this is the end of my story. I'd like to think it went pretty well. So I
come till I die of starvation I'll watch as this world goes to hell So goodbye, goodbye, my neighbors Now I don't have to hear your stupid dog No more of the days of paying taxes This world will be gone in the fog So You know, I told him if he got a new job, he wouldn't have to worry. None of this would be a problem. But he fucking let me down again. God damn it, Marty. Well, I guess it's time to shoot some zombies. To be continued when Crab Cycle returns. Oh, or will it? <laughs> <laughs> 